In this next review portion, I am going to show you how to work the problems in your review that relate to constant velocity. One of the first things that I've noticed people struggling with is knowing when to use different equations. Again, one of the things that I like to do when I go through a problem is I identify all my numbers and their units. I can do that without reading the problem. The next thing that I'm going to do is read through the problem and identify those key words that let me know which equations to use. So I read a horizontal force of 48 newtons is required to slide a two kilogram box across a floor at a constant velocity. That's one of my key words. What is the coefficient of sliding friction between the box and the floor? Well, coefficient of sliding friction is another one of my keys. That is mu. Anytime I'm looking for mu, I'm using my constant velocity formula. Remember that with constant velocity, all that we have to worry about is this little guy called mu. So I draw my picture. 48 newtons is my horizontal force. It really means force applied. But as long as you know what horizontal is, they're the same on both sides. That's true anytime we have constant velocity. My box is two kilograms. Now if I were to look on my equation sheet for that coefficient of friction, this little symbol, I would find the equation, the force of friction, is mu times Fn, or I would find the equation mu equals the force of friction divided by Fn. Well, if I look at my picture, I already have the force of friction. It is exactly the same as the force applied. I do not have the normal force. I would have the normal force if they had given me weight because the up and down forces are always equal in constant velocity. They did not give me weight, so I have to use my formula from the last unit. Weight is mass times gravity. They've given me the number 2. I know my gravity is 9.8 because I'm on Earth. I multiply 2 times 9.8, I get 19.6. It is a force, it's Newtons. I can label my arrow. Labeling my arrows helps me to see that I have forces. So my force of friction 48 newtons. I divide that by my normal force, 19.6 newtons, and that is going to give me my coefficient of friction. 48 divided by 19.6. My answer is 2.45. I do not have a unit. Units have canceled out. Now some of you figured this out in class and said, Miss T, you said that the coefficient of friction should be between 0 and 1. That is true. It is typically between 0 and 1. 0, no friction at all. You can't actually walk on a frictionless surface. That's why it needs to be a little bit higher. If the surface was truly frictionless, you would fall on your face every time. A coefficient of 1 is the coefficient of friction for a tire on a dry road. 
Anything below this is slippery. Anything above this is difficult, sticky. So a coefficient of 0.1 is like ice. Coefficient closer to 0.9 would be maybe trying to slide, hmm, trying to slide something that is covered with rubber, maybe a rubber stopper, trying to slide it on a table. Going over one, you're talking about something sticky. Maybe it's tar, maybe it's tape, but you're trying to slide something over a sticky surface. So this is not a good scenario, but it is possible. Most of our answers are between these two numbers, not always. Okay, those are coefficient of friction problems. At this point, I'm going to work through the problems. Again, if you are trying to learn to do these, I suggest that you pause now, work the problem. When you get stuck, play and see how you're doing. Pause at any time that you need to work ahead so that you can check that what you're doing is accurate. This is my drawing of the log being pulled by the bulldozer. If you notice, they gave me the weight of the log that points down. It is the exact same as the up arrow for normal force. They also gave me an applied force of 224, which I know at constant velocity or uniform velocity is the exact same as a friction force. This makes my equation very simple. They have given me the force of friction because they gave me the applied force. They have given me the normal force because they gave me the weight force. Again, we divide, Newtons cancel out. My numbers are 224 divided by 500. I end up with an answer of 0.45. Again, no units because this is coefficient of friction. Okay, number 11. Remember, when you see this next to laboratory cart, it's an adjective describing the cart. This means it is our weight. Because it is Newtons, it goes as an arrow. Masses, kilograms, go inside the box. Constant velocity. So the up equals the down. We don't have friction for applied force. We are solving for applied force, but remember the applied force and friction force are equal. What I'm going to need to do then is to rewrite my equation. I want to pull down 
so you can see the equation written as it is on your equation sheet. Because we're solving for force applied and force of friction is the same thing, this is the equation I would like to use. Force of friction equals the coefficient of friction times the normal force. They gave us the coefficient of friction, and we've found the normal force. So the force of friction equals the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Now all I need to do is multiply. 0.67 times 523. I get an answer of 350.41. I have newtons and no unit, so the newton stays just like it is. Not only is this the force of friction, but it is also the force applied. Okay, hopefully you guys are doing okay. One more problem to work out. They wait till the end to tell me constant speed. But once they do, I know that my arrows are all the same. Up equals down, left equals right. 730 Newton skater, that's the weight of the skater. We also know the coefficient of friction. Remember that's mu. So they have not given me the force applied. This is just like the last problem. Okay, so all I know, up equals down, left equals right, but I also know that if I solve for the force of friction, I really get the force applied. See that ice very close to a zero coefficient of friction. Normal force, same thing as weight force. Plug this into my calculator. And I get 94. Point nine. Again, my unit is Newtons. Those are the constant velocity problems on the review.